Let's welcome in a very, very special guest, uh, guest, special guest Kiran Mazumdar Shah. Doesn't need any introduction, of course, from Biocon. She's now joining us. Uh, Ma'am, you know, last weekend you had a news flow which you shared with your shareholders and more importantly with all the consumers here uh, into India that uh, there is a drug which was used for uh, cirrhosis is now also being you know, tested positive or, you know, you can go ahead and give it to very severe patients uh, regarding uh, COVID and one of the important developments. Can you just start by what has happened? What has Biocon discovered? And it's been a week now. So, you know, how dispatches have happened? What has been the feedback, if any, uh, which you have got from any of the uh, lead doctors from any states? So, um, as you know, uh, COVID-19 has basically created a huge sense of uh, concern, fear, and, uh, you know, the mortality rate has really been very challenging across the world. And as the disease became known, we realized that what was uh, really causing the mortality was what they call the cytokine release storm. The virus basically uh, not only induces antibody production, but it also induces T cells to trigger the release of cytokines in a very uncontrolled way. And therefore, it was this uncontrolled cytokine storm that was actually creating a very intense autoimmune disease in the body, which was eventually killing and stopping and shutting down all the organs and causing death. Uh, what cytokines do is that they actually create huge inflammation in your lung and respiratory passages, which then, you know, drop the oxygen levels and then create a, lo a lot of cascading uh, destruction in the body. With that in mind, we looked at one of our drugs, which is uh, very well indicated for autoimmune diseases of this nature, which we had developed for psoriasis in the country, in India, and then licensed it to a U.S. company who was actually developing it for other autoimmune uh, indications such as graft versus host disease, acute asthma, and lupus nephritis. And when you looked at the mechanism of action, it seemed that it could work in COVID-19. So we did. We went to the regulators and we said we would like to try this drug in COVID-19 based on the hypothesis that this mechanism of action might help. And with that, we conducted a small proof of concept study in 30 patients where 10 patients were not given the drug and 20 patients were given the drug. And to our surprise, we found that 20, all 20 patients in the drug arm recovered, whereas three patients died in the control arm. This basically gave us very, very uh, encouraging uh, information with which the uh, uh, CDSCO, the drug controller, actually gave us a restricted emergency use authorization to continue to, to try out and continue to treat patients with COVID-19 and then do a phase four trial to, to corroborate the findings of the uh, small pivotal study that we had done. And what is very interesting is that in the meantime, because this is an approved drug in India, many doctors had been using it off-label, just like they've been using tocilizumab off-label, which is an IL-6 targeting antibody, and have been finding very, very good results with, these, with this drug. Now, ever since, of course, we've got this emergency approval, we have actually now been able to use it in Stop. many patients across the country with also very promising results. So that's all I can say at the moment. Right now, obviously, our U.S. partners are also very keen to start a trial in the U.S. So we are working with them to start this soon. And I think it's all very encouraging news for us because this could be a very, very promising and large drug for us. Right. You know, of course, you know, not talking about the size and, you know, how big it could be at this point of time. But, you know, could you elaborate more on the part as to what has been the encouraging results? Uh, so initially, you know, one would say that the study was not that big. But of course, it's a situation of emergency. And that's why, you know, however you could do on limited number of patients, you did the study and released. But going ahead, uh, you know, will more studies be conducted? Will the base be expanded so that, you know, better results can be achieved? Well, that is expected of this study because, you know, as I mentioned to you, this is a pivotal proof, proof of concept study. And in an emergency use situation, this is what all regulators allow you to do. 
This is not that you need large amounts of data because in an emergency, you want to basically make take advantage of any promising data. This is what happened with Remdesivir. This is what's happened with Favirapir in our country. This is what's happened with HCQ in our country. This is what's happening with many, many drugs in the US and India and many parts of the world. You're basically trying to you know, use anything that shows promise. That's why it's called an emergency use authorization. And it is a restricted authorization which will only then become more uh, approvable or approved when you have more data. So in order to create that more da data, we are going to do a phase four trial, which will, uh, which will actually uh, encompass at least a few hundred patients to see whether this data actually is, is, is proving the same in these patients. And I think uh, what we have seen in the first study and in many patients who have been used off-label is that there's a clear reduction in, in cytokines. That is the most uh, important data that you have to look at. The data that you have to look at is the, re the reduction and, uh, of the cytokines and therefore the calming of the cytokine storm, which obviously then in, you know, reduces the probability of mortality. I think that's the way you have to look at this drug. And I think we are very, very encouraged. And that's why the U.S. partners want to quickly start a study in the U.S. Because as you know, U.S. is also having very high mortality due to cytokine storms. Uh, Ma'am, you know, now we are getting a lot of news regarding vaccines, therapeutic treatment, uh, what one should do in COVID, how one should take care of oneself. Over the next six months, uh, you expect more good news to come in, uh, approvals of vaccine to come in. However, you could also tell us the problems with any vaccine because, you know, these will be vaccines which will come in, but side effects, how long, you know, they would essentially, uh, you know, last for. Uh, what kind of patients will they work on? We'll only come to know. We'll only come to know that over a period of time. Yes, I think there are three major questions that are being asked about all the vaccines under development. One is whether it is uh, safe. Uh, two, whether it is actually invoking both antibody and T cell response, and the third is how enduring will, will the effect be. So right now, out of the, all the vaccines which are sort of advancing in phase three or phase two, I think right now the AstraZeneca vaccine looks very promising since it has not had safety concerns and it has actually shown response both in T cells and antibodies, which is very good news. Now we need to see how long will that effect endure. You know, so that is really the questions being asked. And you cannot answer all these questions in a very short time. But I am very hopeful that by the end of this year, if this vaccine continues to show uh, endurance at least for six months, we could have a vaccine by the end of this year. Um, on the other hand, uh, you know, you have the Moderna vaccine, which of course has shown a very uh, good antibody response, but it has not shown any T cell response. So that's a big concern in terms of immunologists. And the second thing is it has had a lot of adverse events. So the safety question, safety, uh, question mark is there because the first uh, doses have been given to healthy volunteers. And if they have shown such uh, you know, adverse events, they are wondering whether, uh, the, you know, how will it happen in a larger general population. So these are the concerns with the Moderna vaccine. Of course, in the pipeline are other vaccines as well. In India also, we are very focused on two of our own vaccines, and that's getting into phase one. So phase one data is very important to see both safety and efficacy in terms of whether they induce both antibody and T cell response, that is all going to be very important. So I think you need to keep watch this whole vaccine space very, very closely. And let's hope that at least in the next six months, we should have uh, a vaccine being released into the market. Right, ma'am. Thanks so much for taking out time for us. Always good to get perspective. Uh, that was, of course, the management at Biocon recently got uh, a therapeutic treatment uh, for serious to maybe closer to 
slightly higher mild patients which are as of now showing good results but of course as she said uh, more and more studies would be conducted by various companies more partnerships would happen and over the next 6 to 12 months you should get more news regarding vaccine and therapeutic treatments uh, for the drug.